What's the mother fucking deal, Sauce Nation? I apologize for the extended delay, but hey, we here to stay. You know, it just it just took us a little bit longer than usual getting tutored and booted, man. But we're gonna get everything in order, man. We're gonna get everything right. Tight like white. First and foremost, man, welcome to Salt Sports. If you're not familiar with Salt Sports, Salt Sports is a Houston, Texas homer network. It means we're talking all sports, but only Houston. With that being said, man, hey, we're going to get into some very interesting conversation tonight. You know, it's uh, practice 14, day 14 of the Texans training camp. We're going to talk about some other things that's going on around the city. Uh, but before we get into that, let's get into who we have joining us this evening on the round table. Who we got in the mix with us tonight? going on you got your boy third coast sports tv wink in the building it's the number one shit talking joseph tenny uh, you know it all uh, right no it's your boy breaking news bray bray in the building your boy hector flores in the mix I think the Comcast trying to work a little overtime. We should be all right. We'll see how everything plays out. We should be able to tighten that up. Um, but with that being said, man, we got to talk about the most important thing happening in the city today. Uh, and that is you, the fresh motherfucking ingredients, man. If you're not familiar, this is where we get into the motherfucking roll call. Again, if you don't know how that works, if you are from the city, man, shout out your side with pride. If you're not from the city, then, you know, hey, let us know where you're from so we can send a little bit of that digital computer love. And while you're getting that in there, we'll go ahead and uh, put the number up here. If you want to text the sauce line, calls are not available yet. We'll open it up for calls later on in the stream so you can uh, drop your sauce. You know, you can you can spill your sauce on there. And matter of fact, I shout out to Chandler already holding it down. Just shout out to the round table. Honcho Wink, Tenny, Breaking News, Bray Bray. Already, I already appreciate that love. Shout out to Chandler, man. Always holding down the sauce. We got a couple of... Uh, He's all, uh, we got actually a couple of texts we got to catch from last, yesterday. And then, uh, let's see, like, I'm trying to see what we're getting a lot of drop action here. We're getting, we're getting some, 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 some drop action. We're going to figure out what's going on in the background while we get that taken care of. But uh, let's see who we got in the mix. And like I said, we're going to take a couple of those uh, texts from yesterday that we're going to get back into it. So I see y'all been active. Nathan King, Seth Clark, Mr. Asian Pikachu, Samuel Eschafoni. I don't know, I guess I said that right. KSA57, what's the motherfucking deal? Broderick Brooks, what's the motherfucking deal? Miss Voodoo Child. T Real, what's the motherfucking deal? Outlaw, Max Vasquez, Quincy Jones, The Cune. Josh Cooper, Demarcus Johnson, James Harden, Isaiah Ramirez, what's the motherfucking deal? Victor Neatomi, hope I said that right. Texan Boy, Jay Dizzle, what's the motherfucking deal? Uh, HTX Savage, Jay Bird, Jimmy R, what's the motherfucking deal? Kenneth, Zanny Rich, what's the motherfucking deal? David. Pritchard, what's the motherfucking deal? Uh, Red Wolf 25, what's going down? What's the motherfucking deal? Berkeley Boss, let me make sure I ain't missing nobody. I see South Park in the house. I see Pearland in the house. Uh, Greens Point in the house. Already Brian Cushion, you still ain't got no job, eh? Uh, so, anywho, you know, it is what it is, man. So, we got some interesting t- things to talk about tonight. And make sure, look, we didn't make some changes, so y'all go check out that uh, new and improved. Sauce Sports Shop. Just go to staysaucy.com mm-hmm. and uh, check out some of the new sauce merch because we, we trap it. We're trying to do some major things. We're trying to make some upgrades to the motherfucking Sauce Sports Studio so we can bring y'all better sauce, better flavor uh, on a nightly motherfucking basis. Um, but like I said, let's get into a couple of the texts we missed yesterday and then uh, we'll make sure that, uh, like I said, we got to make sure that we get everybody's uh, love we were kind of in and off the day yesterday, and I kind of want to talk about that, too. We were talking about the um, the situation with the uh, Jags kind of towards the end of the stream. We didn't get a chance to really dive into that, and I wanted to kind of finish that up. And um, make sure, too, if y'all are interested in the Madden Leagues, y'all shoot that information via the sauce line. And I know a couple of people sent it in the email, and I'll get those. Um, but And we're going to make that shit shake. Um Let's see, let's see. Okay, so we got a text in. Like I say, we'll get this text in first. It says, uh, so I've been hearing about the offensive struggles in practice. Well, first of all, I find it great to see that not only does that mean our defense is great under Cornell, but it prepares Watson versus the Jags. Um, that's kind of one of the first times we're going to get into today, man. And you've been hearing about a couple of days in a row that the offense has not been looking good, that the offense has been, you know, kind of struggling a little bit. And, uh, you know, man, like I say, is that is that a product of – the offense actually being poor or is it that Romeo Cornell is back and that defense is, is looking live once again. So we'll start off with Wink. We'll work our way to Hector and we'll make sure we uh, get everybody in between. So Wink, your thoughts on 
the offense having a, a, a consecutive day of kind of poor performance. Now, there was no Henderson and no Hop out there today. Well, what do you think is the cause of, of the offense not looking – is looking lackluster, I mean? I mean, it just may be a down day. I mean, everybody's entitled to have a bad day. I mean, before this, how many bad days did you hear about? I mean, Bill O'Brien, even his chin bone was smiling. I mean, because they've been doing so well recently. I mean, so why in the hell do I even have to sit here and be worried about a practice or two being bad when the majority of the practices have been great? As long as Deshaun Watson is performing, why am I, I have no reason to be worried. Deshaun Watson is getting it done. I want to get into a play that I've seen him make, uh, some little highlight that he made today. And we'll probably end up talking about that later on in the stream because I'm pretty sure other people saw it as well. But it's good to know that the defense is getting it. Just like you said, Romeo Cornell is making a difference. He's probably testing out some things to make sure that the offense gets right because of some things that they're going to end up seeing when the season starts. So iron sharp is iron. You're going to get the best of each other sometimes. And uh, that's just how I feel about it. All right, all right. Tenny, your thoughts uh, <laughs> on the situation with the Texans offense looking at having another lackluster day? Man, dude, like like Wink said, man, even even his booty chin was smiling, and that shit was funny as hell. But he, I mean, he's right. Like this is, this has been an issue this this year in our camp. Like we've had we've had a lot of good days compared to two bad days out of fourteen days of practicing, and that's gone. That's going to the Greenbrier, that's coming back from the Greenbrier, that's getting prepared for a scrimmage tomorrow. I mean, you really got to take it into context that, like, you know, this is a good sign, too, because, I mean, when they fuck up, they're learning. They, they, they're learning what they did wrong. They strayed off their path, and now they got film on it, and it's like, hey, you know what? When you get complacent, this is what you look like. Don't get complacent. Definitely agrees. Uh, breaking news, Braylon. So they say they, you know, having a couple of bad days of practice on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, what do you blame that on? Is that just good defense? Is the offense still taking a little bit of time to click? You know, or you know, a couple of guys have been sitting out. I mean, what do you what do you give credit to or or put fault on for the consecutive poor performance days? Uh, this damn Houston ass weather. She is fucking damn near hundred degrees. I guarantee you that shit. Hot as hell. Yeah, Tina, yeah. Just, just, just keep on waving right there. She is. It was hot as hell. And I guarantee that they body is not used to it. I mean, being at the grind, uh, green, green whatever it's called for for almost two weeks, and then you played in Kansas City, you weren't really in no heat. So when you come down here to the humid heat, then you start losing your, flu- losing your flu- fluids and um, – Start being dehydrated. I think that their body not conditioned to it yet. Hopefully, they can finally get conditioned to it because we do got to play in some possibly play in some hot ass cities later on this year. So once they get used to that, I don't think it was anything. You know, anything. You know, anybody being bad because. I think our team has said. I think our team is going to actually overachieve than than what everybody on the round table is expecting. Everybody in the city of Houston, Houston is expecting. I feel like we will be shocked at how great this team could be this year. Could possibly go to the AFC Championship, lead to the Super Bowl, um, and we would know that here very shortly because the season is coming up. We're damn near two weeks away, so um, we'll see. But I don't think it was anything to really worry about. Okay. Okay. Uh, Hector, your thoughts on the situation? We might be getting a little Comcasted here. Hold on. Let me see what we got going on. It's looking. It's looking. It's getting. It's getting. It's getting kind of hectic. All right. Are we good? Uh, your thoughts on the situation going on with uh, the offense having a, a couple of bad days in practice? Is that good defense or, you know, poor offense? Or is it the Houston fucking weather? Um, I would say it's a little bit of of the of the fact that you are going up against, like we all think, is a top five defense. You're talking about Romeo Cornell, who doesn't play around when it comes to defense, and he he doesn't like when the defense looks bad. So I mean, on Bill O'Brien's part, even though he's happy, you know, you still want your offense to look good too. So it's all it's a there's a little competition there. So the defense is currently beating the offense, but it's good practice knowing that you have a top five defense to when you have to go up against 
other defenses, you know, it's like it's not so bad unless we start talking about other top defenses. But also, you know, these guys are getting uh, readjusted to the Houston weather. I mean, we're not only talking about the heat, but we're talking about the humidity as well. So, I mean, it, it, you know, you're going to have a bad day or two. But, you know, with competition, with the defense being as good as it is, I just don't think that you should be really concerned about today. Okay, okay. I can understand that. You know, just uh, just an, uh, a day, just sometimes these type of things happen. It's kind of the general consensus. Consensus. I'm learning how to speak a little English. Consensus around the round table. And I would agree, man. Sometimes, you know, you have those days. Again, you know, missing some of your key players. I believe Hopkins was out. I believe Henderson was out. So, you know, whoever the backup was playing that backup role is definitely probably going to get some work put in on them, you know, because they're playing a little bit more than usual. They're seeing a few more snaps than usual. But, again, even with all that, I heard Watson was looking still his spectacular self. He was still breaking and making runs, making the defense look a little piss poor, you know, looking real shifty on them. But we're going to get a little bit more about Watson here in just a second. But I want to talk about a couple of other things. Uh, I think the only person left on the pup list now is Deontay Foreman. They brought Javoni Robinson, I believe is his name, was a guy that they kind of brought on towards the end of last year. I believe he's a Jamaican guy that played basketball, 6'8 dude. And I think they're trying to try to test him out to see what he can bring to the tight end position. Uh, I don't know if they're trying to find another Graham or, or something like that. I don't know about my hopes for him. Again, I'm not going to count him out until I see him get some action. But, Hector, do you have any thoughts on Javoni Robinson? I'm hoping I'm saying his name right. I hope it's Javoni, not Jabroni, that he can actually contribute. But, um, you know, let me know your thoughts on him and, and, and what you think about that whole situation. What position does he play? Uh, tight end. Tight end. I mean, it just goes back to the whole thing that the tight end position is still up for grabs, that, you know, it's not – Necessar- all the guys aren't necessarily secured, you know, who have played in the last game, even though I think Aikens made a very good argument for himself, um, you know, having two touchdown catches. But I still I still think it's still up in the open. And, I mean, you know, a lot of tight ends that do have a basketball background tend to do pretty good. So I think it's just to add a little competition to it, add, add some more uh, fuel to the fire for some of these guys that are trying to get a job. Do I think he's going to make it? Probably not, but he'll probably be a baseball player. Shit, baseball player, man. Um... I think that he's a player that is going to get some type of, you know, time on the field just to help his career out. It won't be to help the Texans. To help Texans have too many damn tight ends, too many damn tight ends, and possibly um, possibly a new starting tight end. I feel like Atkins is a starting tight end. Ryan Griffin is possibly, could possibly be a, the one man. I'm just saying. I have not heard about Ryan Griffin, I don't, I, and I don't think anybody else on the round table has heard about him this this off season that much. I think he's possibly the one guy out. I don't know, but I think uh, the person that was activated off the pup list is just a guy, a roster filler right now to get some minutes and to help his career out for these next three weeks, three games. Okay, okay. So you don't see him uh, securing a spot on the Texans roster. He definitely have to, with him being out, would probably have to really make a name for himself since he's kind of been on the pup list. Definitely uh, not a real long football career as is, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with him. Um, Tenny, your thoughts on Javonny Robinson? Anything interesting you've heard from him or you think it's just a, another camp body? Uh, at this moment, man, it's just another camp body. Like, you got to think about it. We're going into, what is it, game two. Um, starters are probably going to do a quarter and a half, maybe two quarters of play. Um, then you got to look at the fact that the depth chart's already been released. So, like, it's going to be Griffin, Akins, um, Thomas, then followed up with Anderson and um, Lingle. Lingle. Lingle, whatever the fuck his name is. Dangle Lingle. Um, he, uh... He, I doubt he even plays this game just because he was just up, or upgraded. 
um, they'll probably hold him out so that way he don't like, re-injure himself. Because, you know, I, I think there's an understanding in this league that when players, you know, are at his his current situation that they just want to keep him fresh. And in, like, game three, game four, they let them build some film on themselves so that way their agents can shop it around and say, hey, you know, this is what my guy can offer. Would you like to try to sign him or bring him in or test him out? Uh, and then there's still the fact that, you know, we got practice squad fucking spots still open. So you never know, like, what this guy could do for the Texans as far as being a, uh, a scout tied in for us. So, you know, you never know. Okay, okay. Pop behind the big body of the tight end position. Man, I just saw that on there. We're going to get Wink's uh, thoughts on this. Apparently, uh, Machiavelli 310, shout out to you, uh, saying that Steven Anderson's mom was arguing with Pat D. Stat on uh, the Twitter. So I'm going to have to go check that out, man. Uh, I wonder what about that's very interesting because you know i got i got love for mama charlene you know it's all good you know hey you know that's my favorite uh texas mom in the mix right now but you know we ain't gonna go too far we're just gonna leave it at that but wink your thoughts on jeroni <coughs> javoni robinson and what he could possibly bring i have no opinion on i have no opinion on a jabroni um i don't know anything about him um it, it's like it's like Tina said. It's just a camp body. It's just the field roster spots because they have to have a complete ninety man roster until they do the final cuts in the what fourth week. So you know they just win their options because the tight end spot. You know I I think it's gonna end up getting solidified that third or fourth week. You know just whoever whoever makes the team is gonna make the team and hopefully they can make an impact once they get into the game. But it's, in terms of the uh, jabroni. Um, I have no, just like uh, Quan Bray, I had no real, you know, nothing to say about him because I don't know who the hell these guys are. But, I mean, he says he's a basketball body, so typically those guys do translate very well to the NFL. So we'll see what he does in camp. Oh, and and, and the auto dialogue. Yeah, I saw the screenshots, man. Yeah, I definitely saw that shit. Uh holding me down in the chat yesterday when some people was getting out of line and he had to go ahead and put them in a place. Yeah, I, I saw you, man. I saw you. <laughs> man, uh, so here's the deal, man. I want to talk about a couple of things that we saw coming out of camp today. Some of the videos that were released, you know, some of it by the Texans themselves, some of it by some alternative footage uh, from people who were in attendance today. A lot of interesting things. Um, one of them was what you mentioned a little bit earlier. The Will Fuller, I believe, catch you're talking about on uh on Johnson, and then I saw another interesting play, Colvin, uh, with a nice PBU on uh, Bruce Ellington. Now we can kind of go into those a little bit in depth, and then also kind of discuss some other things that we may have seen or were were interesting in your opinions. Uh, as we go back around the round table. So we'll start with Wink. We'll let you dive into that, and then we'll kind of get into some of the next things. Yeah, um, that pass that um, – that fucking what, – what, what are we talking about? We're talking about the pass breakup from Colvin? Play, the play that just stands out to me, man, was just um, this, like, I don't know how long it was, but it was an effortless throw by Deshaun Watson. And uh, he threw this this bomb on the fucking sideline, and it, it it dropped right in the bread basket. It was no way that it that's that's one of the like those type of passes in this particular pass. If you haven't seen any, you have Twitter, or if, you know if you're able to see any highlights today, man, make sure y'all go check out the pass that he threw to Aunt Will Fuller today on the sideline when Kevin Johnson was guarding him. It was a complete beautiful pass. And um, that's what a sideline pass dropping over the receiver's outside shoulder right into his hands is exactly supposed to look like. He had a nice little pump fake before he threw it, and then when he let the when he released the ball, it the ball didn't even look like it was supposed to travel as far as it did with the velocity that it had on it. It, it looked like he hardly. That's too much sauce. It looked like he was just like if if Tenny was in my room right now and I threw it over him to buy the Come door on, like people, yo turn around. Don't bro, forget your the weekly ball. tie like, to the Church like of Sauce. Any, money, bad money, bad money, bad church, sweat droplet. He just chunked it up there 
And you know, it, it was it was a thing of beauty, man. I I didn't see the other plays, but I can almost guarantee you those were some good plays. But that's the play that definitely sticks out to me. <clears throat> man, appreciate the love, uh, Voodoo Child, <laughs> to the Church of Sauce. I apologize. I know it's just it's something uh, going on. We get we getting some 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 Comcastery going on this evening because things are just not uh it's, it's acting a little sketchy it's just up and down so if y'all catch a little lag again i apologize for that and uh we'll, we'll get that worked on oh uh, yeah uh let me see what we got going here uh tenny on your thoughts on you know what you saw coming out of camp today uh it seemed pretty good man it seemed like a like like Wink was saying, I think that 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 catch right there was probably like the highlight of the day. Like it's just one of those things where like when you see that ball floating through the air, like all that can go through your mind is these motherfuckers really said that he didn't have enough strength to get it downfield. Like seriously, like yeah, it's it's it was it's just ridiculous to think about all the fucking knocks that people threw at Watson and just just the fact that we got lucky that we got him. Like I mean. Just looking at camp, I mean, looking at the interviews, it did like even though coach said that it was a bad day, it just didn't feel like a bad day. Like you really don't feel it. Like it just feels like it's one of those days where it's getting back to the grind. And I think all of us are just on the edge of our seats for Saturday. And you know, just one thing that I did read today that 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 made me feel happy was seeing that uh, Akins is getting some time in with uh, Watson. And this is like I said way before like if Akins can find a way to get on the same on the same field with Watson at the same time he might be able to brew something up there might be a little magic there and he's got that practice time in with him today and uh he got a catch off of him today so I mean uh, coaches can say it was a bad day I feel like it was just another good day um breaking news Bray Bray what do you have to say, say, about what you saw come out of camp today, the general consensus, you know, with people saying it's bad, but what plays did you see that were most interesting to you that kind of that could have put a highlight on the day for you? I mean, okay. Um, to me, the biggest play was the dude that had some of the biggest questions on why he was being signed to that contract, and it's Aaron Colvin. And, you know, he showed the reason why he was brought here. And that's show that he can be a corner that we can trust on the outside or inside. Uh, he's she's trying to make trying to make us all believe this. Um, and hopefully, he proves us all wrong when we made when we made our um, assumptions of the signing in 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 March. But um, that was really um, eye opening, and you know maybe maybe he was a good signer, maybe he was a steal or something like that. But um, so that was the best play. Also, the offensive plays that we did see. Yeah, okay. Although Bill O'Brien said it was a bad, it seemed like they were struggling. Um. <laughs> hey, hey, my bad. It, it's it, it's just everything that goes on this round. Hey, my bad. I'm losing focus here. But um. The lows that were low on the office, I'm not sure what happened was low, but the highs was pretty high. So um, all around, I think it was a pretty good day, especially defense. Defense still tall again, which is defense has always been. I would I would focus on this team. We've always been a top ten defense for the pet for and for at least seven of the last six years. I don't. It's just it's been defense for this team. So. Hopefully we can, you know, have both the, both solid days from each side of the ball, but that's hard to do. So we'll see tomorrow when we scrimmage against the 49ers. Okay, yeah, that COVID signer might actually turn out and pan out to be something we've seen. You know, almost every day seen a good play coming from Aaron Colvin. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens with him uh, overall. Um, and I almost want to say we've been seeing more good plays from Colvin than we may have from uh, J. Joe. So that's a very interesting thing to to take a look at. Uh, Hector, your thoughts on the best play you saw coming out of camp today that you may have caught your eyes on and what maybe piqued your interest the most as far as news coming out of camp today? Um, kind of going with 
with uh, what Braylon said. I mean, seeing that play from Eric Colvin, um, I mean, granted, it's still practice, but to see him, you know, kind of looking good, it's, you know, you want to have faith in what the moves the Texans make. And, I mean, a lot of people had a lot of questions on Aaron Colvin because a good slot corner, we have never seen him as anything else besides that. So, uh, to see him out there, I just, I just think we, you know, it gives you at least some faith. You definitely want to see what he could do in the game. But, uh, I mean, it gives you some confidence. Um, so what I want to talk about now is actually, and I would say my favorite player today was the Colvin breakup because, I mean, he just had great position on him. But you guys have mentioned a couple of things that, that are actually that it's, it's time to kind of lead towards, and that is the 49ers will be coming to town. Uh, but before we get into the 49ers coming to town, I want to talk about the most interesting thing I saw today had nothing to do with a current Texan, but everything to do with a former Texan who was a Texan draft pick that a lot of people didn't care for because, you know, they said he couldn't cover. But I liked him because he had some dog in him, you know, a thing that the Texans have been lacking for a while, especially since he left. I want to talk about one DJ Swearinger. And I don't know if you guys had an opportunity to see what DJ did today to one Terrell Pryor. And I'm telling you, that's the kind of attitudes you got to have on this team. But again, they, they what they didn't realize they picked up a, a a wild boy. His name was Jungle Boy Swag for a reason. They couldn't contain DJ. He was just too wild for the the good guy culture of the Texans. They they stepped out on a limb and they weren't able to to, to wrangle him in uh, in the way that they thought they would. DJ Swearinger is uh, currently a Redskin. Terrell Pryor, former Redskin, he left, went to the Jets, was talking some shit about uh you know the redskin secondary and they couldn't cover him and they can't do this and so they were kind of waiting they were anticipating the chance to see him again oh man matthew roberts appreciate the love man good to see you um but it's been a minute and uh <laughs> yes yes been a bit it been always good to see but they were uh, they they had a little interesting exchange because you already saw the brawl break out uh yesterday so today i can't remember who was covering him but uh, they definitely been getting Terrell Pryor's ass, giving him a hard time, punking him the past few days. Said they've showed him no respect. They won't even put a corner on him. He's been getting covered by safeties the entire time that they're doing drills, you know, one-on-ones. He hadn't been able to catch anything. So after the drill today, uh, it was pass breakup on Pryor. Jungle Boy Swag, a.k.a. DJ Swearinger, feigned, faked a punch at him. And when I said I've never seen a man flinch this hard, not in pads. I mean, this man isn't fully. We're talking about Terrell Pryor probably got a good half a foot on DJ Swearinger. Probably got a good 15 to 20 pounds on DJ Swearinger. When I say this man almost folded him from a fake punch, you know, I've never seen a man get bent over from a fake punch. I've seen a motherfucker get folded. You know, I say I've seen a motherfucker get gut checked. You know what I'm saying? I've seen a motherfucker get dropped. But from a fake punch, this motherfucker. Uh, there's no excuse. You got a whole helmet on. You got a whole set of pads on. You a bigger man than this man. What is it? What does that say to you? One, how if you were a teammate of Terrell Pryor, what would that say to you about his character? And is this a guy that you want to go to war with on the battlefield? Hector, we'll uh, we'll start with you. We'll work our way back, man. I don't know if you had a chance to see the video or not. If y'all haven't had a chance to see it, man, y'all definitely got to check that out because it was hilarious. So, Hector, your thoughts on... uh on the former Texan, DJ Swearinger, punking the shit out of Terrell prior today. Honestly, man, if I was, like, his teammate, I'd probably be like, dog, you's a bitch. <laughs> like, <ooh. laughs> like, come on, man. That's got to be on the, on Monday, whatever they do that, what is it, ESPN thing? Come on, man. That, that's got to be there. Or we'll make our own version of come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> he wasn't going to hit you. <laughs> Pussy, bro. <laughs> I ain't never, ever, ever, ever seen somebody with a helmet on flinch. He had his helmet on and flinched. That's bad. That's embarrassing. You lost your manhood right there because you flinched when you had a when you had protective gear on. And DJ Swanger didn't had no gear on. He had his helmet off. He, of course, he had the gloves. It was 
Uh, okay, granted, it was no pads, but still, man, flinch with a helmet on his face. You got a whole face mask. What are they gonna do? Punch, punch through the face mask. If he do, then he, that's one strong person. But he that swear just strong as hell. So it's it's just because that nigga was knocking nigga heads off. I mean, clean off, decapitated. Tenny, you got any thoughts on the the altercation between DJ Swear and Terrell Pryor? I swear to God, I gotta watch this video because I, I I read the article about him taunting him, but I swear to God, that that motherfucker had to had to pinch one off if, if it was that bad. If he if he was that shook to his core, that motherfucker butthole had to pinch something off, had to pinch some excess skin off or something. That motherfucker, they probably. Uh, I mean, Jesus Christ, how do you do that? Like, how how much how much bitch you gotta have in your soul to to see a fake punch? And then react like that. Like, seriously, I, I I got to meet DJ Swearinger one time at a signing. Like, one time. DJ Swearinger ain't even taller than me. Like, bro, like, even though I know he's an athlete, if he flinched at me, I'm not going to be like, oh, God. Uh, I'm going to be like, whoa, 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 chill, motherfucker. I ain't going to try to catch the ass whooper from him. But, I mean, I'm going to be like, what's wrong? What, what happened? What I do? But, uh, fucking personally, dude, like, it's just like, like, he, he can never, never ever 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 act hard ever again like there there is a period behind that shit i swear to god if i was his teammate i'd freeze frame that shit and fucking put it up in the locker room like this shit is a fucking movie like it's lethal weapon and fucking dan donald glover or daniel danny glover is just fucking dancing out in the street with his chicken underwear i mean come on man no fucking prior he he's got to hang it up don't don't ever shit talk again so you're saying basically the boy got his man card revoked. Um, dog, I'm telling you one thing. You can't look. Terrell Pryor can't go to the club with me, big dog. Shit, if it pop off, shit, oh, you you in that hole one deep, dog. You you out of there. It's, it's a wrap for you. Uh, Wink, I don't know if you had a chance to get to, to see the video, but I'd like to know uh, your thoughts on the exchange between <laughs> Terrell Pryor and, uh, and uh, Jungle Boy Swag. Your th- that's a, that's some whole shit, bro. Like you do shit, like bro. That's some that's some shit, like some 1990-1992 type shit. Put your hand on the hot dog stand if you love your mama type shit. Like bro, like you know what I'm saying. You slap the hand, bro, and you just slap the shit. You can miss the shit to slapping the shit out of the the person. You know what I'm saying. You slapped your hand, bro. Like I don't get it. This dude is bro. He gets no respect nowhere where he goes. Like nowhere. Absolutely no way. Rewind it, Braylon. I just missed it. Rewind it. Go back. Go back. Keep it to the side. Rewind it. Go back just a little bit, bro. I did not get to see it. I did not get to see it. Hold on. Hold on. I, I just want to see this for myself so that I can have the, the pure reaction I'm supposed to have by seeing a whole... Oh! <laughs> he weak. He weak as fuck for that. Bro, like he is so trash, bro. His wife, his girlfriend, <laughs> oh, he God. trash. Does it got for sound? Bro, Does it got oh, sound? Did he go? Ah! So, he is so <laughs> trash, bro. Like it, he got the helmet on, bro. He, he, he worse than he worse than. He, 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 Oh shit! I didn't like oh, it. Oh my god, bro! He worse than when he worse than when old oh, boy when uh when Geno Smith got chin checked the other day. Oh shit! He didn't even throw a faint. <laughs> 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 oh man! You see, yeah, yeah. That, see, he used to get his school money taken. Like this is a point blank, bro. He, he, he used to. He was used to this type of abuse. Like, I mean, I mean, it is what he is, bro. Like, he's just not what he all cracked up to be. He was able to make some plays at receiver when he was in the Browns uniform, and I'm pretty sure he he did all right last year with the Redskins. But at the end of the day, it's just the. Oh my God, bro! Just. Let's just move on because there's no point. Shout out to shout out to shout out to DJ Swanger because he's a real MVP for that.
real MVP for pulling this whole card like that. Like, Man, straight but, up. But here's the deal, though. See, like I said, that's on prior, though, for leaving and talking all that trash, knowing, you know, he probably talked all that shit not realizing there was going to be some joint action. He was going to have to see them boys again, and, you know, thinking he was going to be in his safe space and all that other shit. But, again, got exposed like, like, like the whole he is. But speaking about joint practices, man, we got uh, the 49ers coming to town tomorrow. Well, they're already in town. I believe they, someone was at the uh, Astros uh, game. Uh, when they say one of one of the rookies was at an Astros batting practice, if I'm not mistaken, um, <clears throat> the my third base coach's son. Oh, look, he got they all got to get fired. And for a week, they fired for a week until the 49ers get out of town. We can't have them leaking no nothing. Nah, I'm just fucking around. But um, the thing is, okay, he's rocking with the straw. Okay, um, but coming up with the joint practice, man, you know. We saw the video of Sherman getting dusted by Marquise Goodwin, you know, earlier and, and when once training camps got started. And, you know, we, we got some guys that we want to see what they're able to do and kind of vice versa. We got some speedy guys on our side. You know, we got some, some very uh, hard covers on our side too. And we got some guys, they have some guys that are, that are pretty talented on their own. Um, I want to know what you think is going to be the most interesting practice matchup. If you had to pick any, any two guys – one from the uh, 49ers, one from the Texans, uh, in a one-on-one. What do you think is going to be the most interesting matchup in the next couple of days of joint practices and then you hope to see translate into the game on Saturday? Starting off with Wink and then we'll work our way back. I mean, the popular answer is probably going to be Garoppolo versus Watson, but I'm going to go on a different because we need to know where uh, this person is going to stand in terms of protection. And that's Solomon Thomas versus uh, Julian Davenport. I want to see. I want to see how he holds up against you know some of these guys with better bass rushing skills. I mean, he could end up going against a guy like DeForest Buckner or somebody like that, man. Somebody who can truly push up in the pocket. I'm not sure of what scheme they're running. I'm not sure if they're still running a three-four if they move to a four-three. You know, because I'm not sure who they D coordinator is. But in terms for me. I want to be able to see that because, like Tenny did say, when you go back and you go look at that Kansas City game, it was at times, even though we didn't give up a sack, we gave up some pressures and we gave up a few QB hits. You know, not that that's necessarily that's not the worst. It's not the worst outing, but it's some things that can it can be improved upon. So just because of that type of pass rush that the um, which is very underrated that the um. San Francisco has. That's a matchup I can say that I'm looking forward to. I mean, I've not already seen what Sherman and uh Sherman uh how he how he fares against Fuller and Hopkins. So I'm no longer excited about that. I've seen it in prime time when he was when he was at his prime before injury on a much better team. So it's meaningless right now to see him get burnt by either one of those dudes. Okay. All right. Tenny, your thoughts. Who is the most interesting matchup that you would like to see in this 49ers Texans joint practice coming up? Uh, I want to say our entire secondary against their wide receiver core because it's going to be the fact of the matter is that we're going to have, was it two days of practice with the 49ers, right? And uh, we're going to have two days of practice with them, then we're going to have a game with them on Saturday. It's going to give them, give us a better look inside our guy's head. Like, seriously, like, can you take what you see in these practices and apply it to the game? Because we know we're not going to get exotic with our play calls. We know we're not going to try to to over-adjust our play calling. Like, if something's not working, we're going to switch to switch to play. No. Rack's going to be like, this is what you are going to go out there. This is the co- play, the calls that I'm going to make. These are the plays that you're going to go out there and react to. It's up to you to adjust. I will tell you, you need to get a hold of this guy. You need to get a hold of that guy. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to our players' ability to think fast and take this knowledge of what they're learning and apply it. And that's the biggest thing. Like, we don't have the best guys in the league in our secondary. We don't. And they have to win off of their ability of – or not their ability, but their knowing of this game, their ability to play this game. So, I mean, it – they're not freakish athletes by any means, but they have to be able to know what the fuck they're doing up here first and apply it secondly. Okay, good deal, good deal. Breaking news, Braylon, your thoughts. Um, what is the most interesting matchup that you're looking forward to seeing in the joint practices leading into the game on Saturday? 
I have to agree with uh, Wink here. Um, to see what our offensive line can do against DeForest Buckner, have to do against Solomon Thomas, have to do against Ruben Foster, have to do against uh, Malcolm Smith, have to do against those guys who could rush, um, well, can rush, and see how they fare against those top, top, Top twenty picks from the past three, three, four drafts, and a, a Super Bowl MVP. Um, see, see what they do against those guys, because although people don't talk about them, they are a underrated bunch of uh, defense. It's, 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 it's underrated bunch um, on the defense. It's, it's underrated. It's young. It's a whole bunch of potential. Foster could, you know, possibly surpass Bobby Wagner as Bobby Wagner reaches, you know, start falling down, which could be pretty soon because he's near in his thirties. So he's still going. So he's going to slow down in speed. But I'm, I'm, um, but that that defense. Well, it's it's okay. I'm gonna go defense versus offense because the whole the defense as a whole isn't a slouch. You, of course, no matter what, it's still Sherman. Even if Sherman is slow, I, I, I although I know both our receivers can kill him on just a nine route, just run nine, boom, nine, go burn. Um, also, what what their speedy receivers, a couple of their speedy receivers can do against our corners because that's also a, a huge matchup to see if to see if our corners can hold up with them. I, I believe they can, but um, I mean it's gonna be a good. It's, it's going to be a good scrimmages. It's, it's going to be good scrimmages to look at, and these scrimmages will tell us what we can do. And then the following week, I don't know. So hey, it's a couple couple weeks we got to look at. All right, all right. So Bradley want to see everybody versus everybody, but uh, you know, Hector, your thoughts uh, on you know what a particular matchup you want to see coming from uh, the Forty ers and the Texans joint practices. Our defense against Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, obviously, last week we went up against, you know, Patrick Mahomes and uh, I, don't, I don't remember the. I think what Chad Henney and uh, and some other another quarterback that I don't really give a shit about. Um, and you're going up against Garoppolo. Granted, you know we still don't really know what kind of quarterback he's going to be, but from what we saw last year, he looks pretty good. And I mean, the guy's now dating a porn star, so he must be doing something right. And um, I just think we want. I want to see what what we could do against some. I guess a uh, a good quarterback. Not not saying anything against Pat Mahomes. Sorry, sorry, Spitz. But um, I just want to see like how we do against a quarterback that actually knows how to stand in the pocket and and deal with pressure in front of him. Very good. Now a couple of people in the chat uh, <clears throat> mentioned what I'm I'm pretty interested to see. Like I say, I've been I've been putting a lot of crow on on Johnson. And I kind of want to see what he does against some of the speedier guys. We've seen Fuller get, you know, the best of him quite a bit, uh, you know, in this this preseason. You know, but we've seen him take on challenges like Hopkins, and he's got him a couple of wins. You know, he's taken a couple of L's here and there. It's kind of been a little bit of back and forth, and I'm sure Hopkins getting the best of it. I'm sure, you know, the receiver core getting the best of it. Um, I want to see what he does against some of the uh, speedier receivers, like a guy like Goodwin. I think that's the – if I'm talking about just players specifically, Goodwin and um, – and, and and Johnson, I would like to see uh, Edge of Four again, and to see what he's bringing to the table. That's something I'm definitely looking forward to seeing. Jimmy G got money. That's why. Oh yeah, the money. They, yeah, definitely. Uh, you can have any porn star you want if you got the uh, the proper amount of money. So you ain't got to have that much money. You just say you're uh, filming a new flick and you got what you need. Um, but. I, like I said, I want to see Edge of Four, you know, and see how he does against that line, you know, see if he's able to kind of recreate some of the looks that he got, you know, last week against the Chiefs. Because, again, like he went up against some starters in the Chiefs and he uh, looked pretty nice. So I want to see what, you know, he brings to the table. And just the kind of looks, well, like I say, it's going to still be pretty vanilla. But just, again, like what we can see against uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. So that's kind of what I'm interested in. Um, <clears throat> now, I want to say okay, – okay, 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 hola. We got something to mention real quick, real quick. Is this the final weeks of the NFL? Is 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 this the week of fight? I'm just asking, because Jarvis Landry just had a fight with his own teammate Terrence Mitchell, and them bless him. Going at it, <laughs> bless him. I, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Jarvis Landry, the way he acting is like the Browns are really not on point. Like even with all these signings that they got, 
and he, he's trying to show out for the cameras. If he just got into a fight with his own teammate, them Browns, they got they got something dysfunctional going on there. Okay, yeah, I mean. Honestly, it's because probably Hugh Jackson probably can't get him under control, you know, and stay in the way that he should. But, you know, time will tell. Like, look at this shit. Look at this crazy shit. Yeah. Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson gonna fuck around and not be there that long because Hugh Jackson made a comment about Landry. You know, he was they were asking him about uh you know what he thought about, you know, the, what he said in the locker room and he's just kinda well he's he's new here too, you know, and he's gotta learn and you know, it wasn't nothing like he didn't really take a real stance on it. And and that's what I think about Hugh is Hugh might be I don't know if he's considered a player's coach or what, but you know, I to me he's not taking control of that team and he might not be getting the respect. Uh, from those players that he he should be getting as a head coach. And I think when you do stuff like celebrating a 0 and 16 and shit like that, uh I think people look at you in a different light, you know, whether you're trying to be humorous or whatever it may be, you know, uh I think you just you you know, you you're going to lose respect. I don't think he's going to I don't think he's going to make it through the whole season. I think it's going to be a wrap for him about halfway through the season, man. Honestly. Just putting yeah. that out there cuz you got to remember who's the offensive coordinator for the Cleveland Browns now. What is it? Uh, the you know what was it? Todd Haley or something like that. But he, he was the offensive coordinator with the uh, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I mean, I think the, I think the uh, Dorsey kind of already has planned what he wants to do because Hugh Jack. I mean, Hugh Jackson is just. I mean, I I like the guy. I thought he was a good offensive coordinator, but maybe that's just it for him. So I mean. I wouldn't be shocked if if that was the whole point of bringing in Haley. Yeah, we we gonna be saying bye bye to Hugh. I mean, you you can't put together the two seasons that he's had with the damn team, and then turn around and have another down year. Like you you've you've had two years. You better come out eight and eight at least eight and eight. Like I, I can understand the Browns having some patience at eight and eight, but if you don't come out with a positive record, you are going down and you're going down fast. I mean, Hugh Jackson has got to be in a hot seat. I don't care what any of those reporters say about what the owner says, about what the GM says. You 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 just can't do that in this league. You you really cannot put together those two bad seasons. And especially since now they went out and like Bought and traded for all these players to come in. You, 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 you simply cannot put a bad product out there. It might be a short lease. Might be a very short lease for uh, for old Mister Jackson. No action, Jackson. Um, Hard knocks, by the way. No, 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 hell no. I haven't caught an episode. I it looked like it would be interesting enough considering the players that they got on their team because they do have some players. You know what I'm saying that you could be checking for, but I haven't seen an episode. Honestly, I haven't watched Hard Knocks. If we being real, since the were on the Rams, shit was super trash uh, when they got golf. Uh, I don't. I, I don't even know who was on after the, the Buccaneers. Rams. Yeah, I didn't. That shit was corny. Like, watching Jameis eat, a do- uh, eat that W on the sideline when he was mic'd up, I was just so embarrassed for him and his mom. Like, I was just yeah, – the fact that she had him and this is the type of shit she got to see on TV is ridiculous. Like, he's a compl- – he, he just needs to get it straight. I don't I, I don't know what it is, but, man, like, Hard Knocks isn't interested anymore probably just because they're not picking the right team. I think they need to change their criteria. Yeah. Well, they always have to pick a team that's not having a that didn't have a good year. That's the criteria. And, and no, the I criteria that, is uh, not the criteria think, now is just choose any team that's interested in the picks that has a good year. So, yeah, that's what they need to do. They need, they seriously need to make it. The fans need to be able to pick, and whoever has the most votes. I mean, not that you can do it in consecutive years and no shit like that, but I'm pretty sure, like. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. I hate the team, but I would watch the Patriots just so I could see some of their shit unfold in the background. I want to well, know how Bill Belichick They, they, they can't that. choose the Patriots. Yeah, they're going to definitely uh-huh. No, they can't, they can't choose the Patriots ever until the Patriots miss a, a year in the playoffs Yeah, and then follow it up with another missed year. And, um, they, still have the, and they still have the option to say no. 
Yeah, yeah they, they still have yeah. the option to say no. Um, what you call it? Uh, yeah, it, there's a few more guidelines to it because, like, yeah. like what put us in a precarious position was that we hadn't been to the playoffs, and um, what you call it? And we yeah, were. Two and fourteen that season, or yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised they didn't try to come back to us, but you know, Bill O'Brien just ain't gonna have that shit. Well, actually, that was when we came off our first nine and seven season. What the hell am I talking about? Yeah, yeah, that was, we, yeah, we missed, that was we Bill missed the playoffs that year. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was, was Bill O'Brien's first year. We're two years yeah. in a row, missed the playoffs, and did but uh, I will say because today, today is actually gonna be the second episode of Hard Knocks, and uh, but in the first episode, you know, Darvis Landry goes onto this whole little little rant with the with the wide receiver room saying that like that whole whatever whatever the attitude was like before he got there needs to change like he's he wants like supposedly trying to make a change for the cleveland browns yeah yeah but he ain't make that change in the dolphins locker room so now i mean because he wasn't really the leader in 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 miami i mean cleveland literally doesn't have a leader yeah, he he may not have been a he may not have been a vocal leader or no shit like that, but he was definitely the most productive player that they had on offense. That's hands down. No, no one was more productive than he was. Not even Ryan Tannehill. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a look. A couple of uh, texts that we got in on the soft line because the Browns are going to forever be garbage. Uh, no matter what happens, I mean, the Cleveland is just a curse city. Once LeBron left, I mean, all hopes of anything have just have just faded out the window. You know. Um, you know, we got a text earlier from Balin says, uh, "What's good, Hunter? Just want to stop by and say that the wide receiver and safety position this year is stacked. I've heard some good things about Kareem Jackson looking like he belongs at the safety position, so that's a good look, especially with Reed looking a little. Reed just looks a little uh, uncomfortable, I'll say. You know, in the first game, not saying that he wasn't ready. It just looked like things might have been a little." Uh, ahead of pace for him and I think it's just going to take him a second to kind of adjust you guys have any thoughts on them? the wide receiver position I definitely agree the safety position you got Honey Badger you got Reed you know coming along uh, we're missing Hal of course you know um, and Kareem if he's looking good and actually looking capable I mean your thoughts on that we'll start with uh, Hector and then we'll work our way back you know on the safety position for the Texans how do you feel about it I feel good about the safety position I mean I would like to see maybe one more name, you know, from the usual three. Well, I guess Kareem Jackson as well. But I mean, I would like to see, like to hear one more name. Hopefully, Tristan Decoud. But um, I think I'm good with this with say sa- with this group of safeties. I will say though, uh, I wouldn't be very critical on Justin Real in that first game just because he had to go up against Travis Kelsey. I mean that that's just that's just asking a lot from a rookie. I mean, but I think he did. I didn't. I don't think he did terrible, but um, yeah, I think uh, I think he, you know, for for who he had to go up against, you know, it wasn't. I don't think you had to be really critical on him. I would, if the way he, if he looks the way he looks in this coming preseason game, and he still doesn't look up to par, then maybe there's some time to start criticizing. But I think he's still a great pickup. B. your thoughts on the Texans being stacked at safety, or do you? Disagree. I mean, the Texans is back to safety. Uh, whenever you can put somebody like Kareem Jackson, who we know is a person that wants the ball, wants to see the ball at all times when he's on the field, and know he can hit hard and knock knock people heads off like he took basically John Ross' rookie season away from him with that hit. Um, that's a good sign. Uh, also, having Tyron Matthew, an all pro, Pro Bowl safety at 26 years old, still got probably a year or two until his prime. Um, th- that's a good sign. And then also drafting Justin Reed, who is a rookie. We can't really criticize a rookie because he's going to make rookie mistakes at, even, at all positions. No, no matter what position there is, you will never have a perfect rookie. A rookie will always have some type of mistakes. Have uh, um, a rookie coming out looking like um, Barry Sanders in his prime, looking like Dion in his prime. You won't have those guys because they will make mistakes. It's just that adjustment period to from college to NFL. The speed is faster. Everybody's stronger. Uh, everything is more complex offensively and defensively. Um, so there's nothing we can really criticize here for a rookie. The safety is deep. Safety position is deep. 
Kenny, your thoughts on the safety position being stacked, and uh, you know, do you agree or disagree? Safety position is pretty stacked, man. Um, you have been like, if you really pay attention to like what's put out there and what's circulated for us as fans to read about our team, um, we we still forget there's still Corey Moore back there, and Corey Moore, Corey Moore still have are supposedly still having a good camp, and you know. Despite of what how like what happened last year, what troubles he went through, if he's having a good camp and all this, everything's almost been like dead on as far as the reporting for the Texans have gone, as far as everything that gets written and put out there and uh, circulated, um, you got to think, hey, Corey Moore's got to be doing his job. Uh, Tristan Decoud, he's still uh, he's still competing for a position at safety. I just read that the other day from uh, John Harris. And what you call it, let's go forward with, you know, the guys that we know are going to be there. Tyron Matthew, we got uh, Justin Reed, we got Kareem moving into the backfield. So, I mean, we get a lot of a lot of alternating pieces back there that can keep that that position fresh. So that way we're not getting bombed on in the fourth quarter. You can really spell these guys early. And the one thing that I think O'Brien is paying attention to, and he said it a lot, and I'm, I'm starting to, like, catch on to it, is like, maintaining these reps for these guys. He's doing it for the wide receivers. I'm more than certain rack is doing it for the, the defensive backs. You know, as long as they manage these guys' reps, because it's all about lasting throughout the game. If we could if we could just start off and keep these guys fresh in the first half and then really unleash them in the second half, that's where our depth will come in. And that's why I think we're stacked for it. Wink, your thoughts on the safety position and if we're stacked in the in the Texan secondary. Once uh we drafted once we once we got Tyron Matthew, once we drafted well, I mean, before Andre Hale went down and uh, I thought that was gonna pretty much be a good combo right there because I felt like the communication between those guys would have been phenomenal. But um I said Kareem will probably end up starting the season and um you know, Justin Reed will probably end up taking his job later on down the line, you know, because, he, you know, he has the experience, you know, seeing, being able to have guys like that in front of him. We all know when Kareem got dudes in front of him, and if he's able to get there in time, then he's going to make some plays, you know. And that, and when you really think about the majority of the times he's gotten interceptions besides, like, tip passes, it was always because she was in front of him, you know. So now – you have a situation where him and Honey Badger could be in the back patrolling. Uh, I would trust him more back there than I would ever trust in the corner. And I just don't ever want to see him in the corner again. And you have a situation where you could play Justin Reed in dime packages. You know, like if you want to play him as the uh, the linebacker in, a, in, um, in coverage, you would be able to do that. And I think he has the athleticism and he would be able to guard tight ends to a fault, you know, Travis Kelsey is a tall order for anybody in this league. I mean, I don't care who you are. If you were Richard Sherman and you had to guard him play for play, you know, throughout an entire game, I mean, I didn't see A.J. Boye. He had to – he went against him in that Kansas City game in 2016, and he gave and he gave up a couple of plays. He was pretty much locked down against him, but, I mean, he gave up plays against him. And then when we got to the playoffs, you know, shit was just crazy. I mean, well, that was the year before. But um, you know, it's it's. I think it's pretty deep. I think it's pretty deep, and you know, considering other options of where you want to bring them in, it's just a shame guys like uh, Lonnie Valentine Valentine couldn't could never stay healthy because it would have been great to see a talent like that on the field with what he was able to do when he was healthy. Hey, don't we don't we still have Drummond, right? Yeah, that's the other safety. Yeah, yeah, we still got him. And we shipped every pleasant off, and we still got Corey Moore. That's too much, son. Man, yeah, uh, I forgot that we actually had drum. He made a couple of tackles. <laughs> Appreciate the love, Matthew Roberts. Um, let's see. There's just a comment. I was trying to find it um, about the uh, the NFL power rankings, but he was saying it's about the – they got the Vikings at number one on Yahoo. Agree or disagree? We'll make that just a quick yes or no around the round table. We'll start with Wink and work to Hector. Yes or no? Vikings number one in the NFL. But they could make a strong case, though. Yeah. I, I can give it to them. Yeah. 
I'm not answering this. Y'all know this. Hell no. It's no. Mm-mm. No. Hector, your thoughts. Vikings number one, yes or no? I mean, if we're basing it off of last week, then yes. I'm not going to roll with a preseason ranking or, or a, a preseason game, so I'm going to say no personally myself. But I think it is an arguable, arguable argument. Um, let's see. Let's see. Dr. Rabbit texts in. He says, uh, oh, I missed this one yesterday. That's actually not Dr. Rabbit. Who's Texas that? That's uh, great. That shit brought up a whole different fucking name. Uh, that motherfucking number wasn't even in the anywhere list. Okay. Uh, so Dr. Rep said, Todd Haley is a giant LOL cow. <clears throat> He's the reason why the Steelers are always playing down to their competition. Thoughts on Todd Haley? I think Todd Haley is actually a solid uh, OC, personally. What he's done for Big Ben... Uh, if, if every elite season that Antonio Brown has had, he's been a part of it. You know, so Le'Veon Bell, you, you know, the game plans and to constantly be one of the top offenses in the league for the last, what, five, six years. I mean, it's clear the man knows what he's doing. So uh, he's not overrated and he deserves everything that he has come to him. Sooner or later, he'll be a, a head coach. I think I think it comes down to the players made him. I think that the Browns are going to answer that for us. But I, I think his players that he had around him made him. Uh, Haley, um, Haley's one of arguably the top offensive coordinators in the league. Although he has had Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. Um, Antonio Brown has had his career season with Todd Haley. Um, and I'm, I'm okay. A, a, a lot of mistakes that the Pittsburgh Steelers had um, sometimes defensively. How can you not stop Lay Bortles from throwing, throwing for damn near 40 yards on you? That's defensive mistake. That, that's not offense. Um, um, Antonio Brown was always open. Rock concepts was always. Did multiple people open? Um, he had a rookie receiver look like a a, a, a two a, a second year or third year receiver. Juju Smith looked like a one of the better receivers in the league. He was consistently always open, always making plays for them. Um, and I'm although Juju Smith is a good young receiver, I'm not saying that was all Juju. Some most of, some of that had to be all, Todd Haley. It was a lot of times where they had two or three receivers wide open. It, it was it was stupid. I mean, he was able to use Le'Veon Bell to the best of his abilities um, as a as a receiver, as a back. He was able to do anything, even when Le'Veon Bell was suspended. D'Angelo Williams looked like a top five running back in those few weeks. So you can't say Ty Haley is a horrible or uh, or his players were making him. Ty Haley knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing, and if he knows what he's doing. He would be calling the plays for Cleveland. Cleveland can concede because can see, they would be running all over the field. And they have two mobile quarterbacks. E- either one of them can be plugged in. Baker Mayfield looked great in his, his first game. Although it's his first game, it was against two. He still looked great. Deshaun Watson looked great. So if Deshaun Watson looked great last year, it was rookie season. Baker Mayfield looked great. I don't know. Baker Mayfield may be the best quarterback out of this draft. You would never know. But time. since he has Ty Haley, I, I got full I'm confidence in Baker Mayfield. Broke, he has Jarvis Landry to throw to. Is, um, when Josh Gordon comes back with his personal problems, did this stat, and I'm, I'm in it there. Todd Haley is one of the best offense coordinators in the league, and we can't deny what this man has done with the talent he's had at, at, at St. Burns. So, yeah. Hector, your thoughts on uh, Haley, and where would you kind of classify him as an offensive coordinator? I like Todd Haley. I think he is a good coach. Um, I mean, he did have a, a very good committee in Pittsburgh with Ben Roethlisberger and Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown and a gem in Juju Smith-Schuster, who went to USC, by the way. Um, but and, and, I mean, even talk about their tight end group. I think they had a very underrated tight end group with McDonald and, uh, and uh, was it Jesse James? So, I mean, and they have a pretty good offensive line, but you still got to remember the reason why those games were so close was because of their because their defense gave up a lot of plays as well. Um, I think Todd Haley is a good coach. I don't 
know how it's going to be in Cleveland. He does have some good weapons, so I, I, I don't, I don't think it's that much different from Pittsburgh. Uh, but I think eventually, the plan is for the Cleveland Browns is to make him their head coach. I don't, I don't think he's the answer, and um, I think Todd Haley is, is kind of their guy, low key. Bring that back up. Give me a segundo. Uh, but yeah, man, like I said, I Matthew think... Robinson on fire tonight with yeah. the donation yeah. thing. I just had to say that real quick. Yeah, shout out to Matt Robinson. I was trying to bring back the other. He said he wanted to hear the uh, robot it's chicks. Too much it, it? One more time, I promise. We woo, we woo, we woo. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to show you some love. I think the other one, I, I missed it earlier, so I want to make sure, you know, hey, look, I want to make sure you get your, uh, make sure you get your love here. Man, hold on, give me one second. Um, I'll be pushing all the wrong shit. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're going to send the thoughts over later. I going to get some real love. We're going to take care of you. <laughs> we're going to ship some robo hoes. You know how we do. You know, we're going we're gonna to get you some of them, uh, some, some digital loving. Have hey, you seen the asses the, on them robot the James, hoes? The James, the James, the James we will, we will, we will, we will. Yeah, we'll send her straight to you. You can give her probably thirty bucks. She know what to do. Hey, yo, but yeah, I, I, I talk about this. Maybe got me uh, remember about this tweet I saw with this dude named the specifics of a robot hole. He said a, a three hundred wide vibration. But oh, it, it was ridiculous, man. Yeah, man. This dude named all of them. He was talking about a. Uh, uh, a vibrating mouth. It, it, don't mention no robot hose because that yeah, shit was wild. Yeah, man, look, you know, robot hose is a cush den classic. We will be in a den later, but um, I really meant to boot it up. But uh, look, we'll, we'll open up the line for just a second or two. We'll, we'll take a call or two because uh, I haven't had a, we got a couple of texts. <laughs> um, yeah, get on the phone, motherfuckers. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me get this. Hold on. Let me get the couple of last questions. Then we'll open up the false, the, the line. Um, question. Would you want to see a Deshaun Watson web backfield for a trick play? We'll just throw that up for the round table. Yes. Me personally, no. No. That's almost as bad as seeing someone see the wildcat get put out there. At that point, we're just desperate. Hey, hey, hey. I like smoke and mirrors. No, it wouldn't, but honestly, I don't think Bill O'Brien has that type of thing in this arsenal. I don't because honestly, if that's the case, you could somebody somebody could very well make the case and say he could do the same thing with Braxton Miller if that was the case. You know what I'm Man. saying? Even though I know he can't well, really throw. As, Joe, as Joe can throw though. Uh huh. Joe can throw though. Yeah, I know. Joe can throw. I mean, I've been watching him for the last four years. Because the but, Carolina games was always on, so I didn't have no choice but to see him. But, but you got to think of it like this: like if you're an opposing coach and you see Deshaun Watson out there, and then Joe Webb walks out there and lines up, you're running on the field, screaming timeout, and you're looking at Bill O'Brien like, "You, you, fuck you, fuck you, you ain't doing it." I mean, maybe, but honestly, it Psych- really depends woo, on the situation, woo, 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 woo. and it depends. That, that's really a situational type thing where you talk about where the game is extremely tight and uh you've been getting well yeah you're right you you have to be getting killed the team that team would have to have been getting killed on third down like they would have to have gave up something stupid like 13 for 17 in order to even get away from a play like that like if the game would have to be so out of reach and you know those type of situations like what i said in order or the run game is gashing them or or they killing you with play action or something like that for that to work. Oh, and have Joe Webb switched over to a, to a wide receiver number, like 11 or something like that, and hold him. 
Because I'm, hey, hey, Brandon, hey, get, hey. get out of here with that annexation no. of Puerto Rico <laughs> shit. You can't be doing that. Stop, stop. <laughs> Joe will play wide receiver before he ever played. Man, he took yeah, it but all you the, can't switch numbers. Ninety three on yeah. that one. Yeah. He played yeah. wide receiver Puerto Rico. Jesus. If y'all didn't grow up in the nineties, y'all don't even know what we talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Puerto Rico ain't, but, ain't part. It, it, it is. It, uh, it is. But it is still stop. Stop. Why you hate Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico. Oh, now, uh, here's the deal. Let's get a couple What's more of these the texts. We're going to <laughs> we go, we take a couple more of these texts real quick so we can open the soft line. I see y'all trying to call in, so we're going to take a couple of calls. Let's uh, get these last few texts in real quick. Um, let's see. Oh, shit. My fat fingers and shit. Uh, what is Duke Edge of potential only as a Texan? Do you think he will see more playing time when the regular season rolls around? We'll kind of just. Uh, I see it right now. He has to start because I want the day him Conley to be a full-time defensive end in the fourth season. And I honestly think like this. I put it to you like this. He can he can, he can easily come in on pass rush and down the situation. So they put him in a situation of pass rush and he could probably come in and play second down as well. Or first down. However you want to do it. But... I saw this team playing a whole lot of 4-3 in their first game against the Chiefs. And uh, nobody's really talked about that. We played a lot of 4-3. So, I I want to see him. I, I don't mind if he has to put his hands in the dirt. But I honestly want to see a situation where he gets bumped to the outside so the time he can have his hands in the dirt full time. I think uh, I think Ice 4 is going to have a... a a rise on this team like DJ Reader did. I mean, you, you think about who he's playing behind as far as right now, as far as players' titles. Um, he, I mean, DJ Reader came in and he was playing behind uh, Vince Wilfork. Then he started playing beside Vince Wilfork. Then Vince Wilfork started sitting down and DJ Reader kept taking more snaps. It's, it's I think it's just going to be an evolution like that. And I'm kind of curious because if that's the case, Hey, today Van Clowney goes hand in the ground like I like I think every single fucking Texan player feels he should be. I think he's been one of those players where we've just been using him wrong the whole time. We've even used him, been misappropriated his entire career uh, on the Texans. I do I do feel like this go because we do have to say this. We didn't have the appropriate depth for him to be playing on the line at all times either. And no, you're, have, a, you're absolutely we, right. We really didn't. I mean, when you really think about... I mean, the last John year, Simon was hurt all the time. Yeah, Fucking. he was hurt. Scarlett was, was hurt, and he, was, he wasn't as effective. I mean, yeah, you had... You know, I, honestly, we should have played a 4-3 where uh, Clowney, you know, Vince Wilford, DJ Reader, and White were on the field at the same time. You know, but honestly, we didn't have the outside linebacker them to even do that. So I can understand the reasoning for him playing outside linebacker the last couple of years. Maybe not so not so much last year, but years prior, I understand because you didn't have the. I think I think we're building towards the depth of where Romeo Cornell can play a uh, full time four three because he knows how to run a four three scheme. Yep, and let let me be bold right here. Like if Jadavian Clowney. Puts his hand in the dirt for the majority of his snaps this year. Houston Texans fans, get your checkbooks out because we're going to have to chip in on this fucking contract. Because if he really does get them more snaps with his hand in the dirt at DN, he's going to fucking post some numbers. I'm telling you. It's going to be TFLs. It's going to be some sacks. It's going to be fucking... I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him to put some fucking forced fumbles on the ground. And, and here's one last point I'm willing to make about Duke before we go to the rest. I think it's easier for him to perform the fact that he's he's from, this is his hometown. Him being from Houston, people don't really realize how big it is for most people. Most people they play for their for their teams show out, but it's different when you're from Texas and you get to play in Texas. We saw that with Dez Bryant. We saw that with with plenty of other guys, man. And that shit matters, bro. It really, it really fucking does. And I don't think we really credited that, you know, to another reason why he's balling. And we can look at that in another player like Gerald Green for the Rockets. When he comes in, he balls out and does what he has to do. 
very valid point. You know, the hometown effect or the the home state effect. You know, being able to have friends, family, you know, actually come see you live and direct is a is a very different feel. You know. <laughs> oh, woo! That's the sound of the police. Woo, woo. <laughs> Appreciate the love, man. Matthew Roberts definitely holding down, man. Uh, before we open up the sauce line, though, oh, we're gonna, we got one more text from uh, from Chandler. I can't forget Chandler, man. Shout out to Chandler. She's got a question for Wink. Got a question for Wink, and he actually got a question for uh, Tenny too. Said, question for Wink. Do you think there's any chance we might see Ryan Griffin getting cut first, or Tyler Irvin? And second question for Tenny. Do you think Josh Kiaz or Josh Thornton is making? the roster very good question very interesting questions i, I like that keys hit I'm, I'm having nightmares about the keys hit i ain't even get hit goddamn that's what that's what uh terrell Pryor was thinking about when what's the name swag it he's thinking about that key is hit man he's like oh shit yeah i i kind of made the i kind of made the point but it was a little choppy and shit you know on the uh, connection because i was driving from the hotel, you know, from the airport to this hotel, and I was losing the spots. But I kind of touched on that yesterday, and I honestly think both of those players will end up being cut. I honestly believe Ryan Griffin doesn't make it because you're going to have they they got guys this here who just have more athleticism, speed, and probably you know, or more dynamic when it comes to making you know the more critical catches. And and honestly, just guys like Tremaine Pope will be able to get um um. Tyler Irvin out of here. Just like Akeem Hunt pretty much got weeded out when he should have stayed, I feel that that's, that same scenario is going to end up having happening in Tyler Irvin because Pope, it already looks like he's more explosive. He's more decisive. He gets through the holes. He can create his, he can create his own shit he can catch, and he can pass block. So I'm willing to see this man make this team, you know, but he looks good, but we still got to wait and see. I think to base I, it off of a game, uh, base it off one preseason game is a little too soon. You got to wait till the rest of the preseason before you can start. I mean, hopefully these guys make it. I like Thornton. I like Ease, but it's a kind of wait, at, wait and see kind of thing. I think Ease makes it. And I'm going to tell you, one name, and I think I'm going to get a yes out of every single person on the round table right now. Key's going to make it because of one name on this team, Brian Peters. He plays better than Brian Peters. He contributed more out on that game, and he did more in special teams than Brian Peters does. If you go back and watch that game, number 49 was making hits on the special teams, and he made a hit that was pretty loud. He got a little folded on that hit, but he still got the fuck back up. And he hit that motherfucker so hard, that motherfucker got to wear his hats like this from now on. I mean, like that. Like, seriously. Keys has come to show up for this camp. And I would not be surprised that he's going to replace somebody that's like Brian Peters, who's really one of one of those guys like Jay Prosh. He's serviceable. He does his job with us. But at the end of the day, he doesn't contribute enough. And we need guys that needs to start contributing. And if Keys can do that on special teams... That's his. That's his part. That's the role he's gonna play. I was never sold on uh, Brian Peters like that. Yeah, see, yeah, guess, that's what I'm saying. You forget and, about that name. Yeah, I was never sold on him like that. And I just seen what Devontae Love just said about uh, Ryan Griffin. Yeah, I know he got paid, but his contract ain't, ain't killing us. He only got paid <laughs> for like six to six to ten million dollars. Like, I'm his a, contract I'm a, is trash. I'm so, gonna put it like this with with he Anderson Lace. With, with Anderson doing what he's been doing and being at the bottom of the line, Griffin will only stick around because of his veteran status, period. I've been saying Griffin is out of here because there's no way we haven't heard anything good. Of it. We haven't heard anything. I haven't heard nothing about Ryan Griffin. I'm not uh, even sure he was really on the field for the preseason game, so... Yeah, he was out on the field. I'm gonna I'm tell you something good right. for him. He he's listed as number one on on the tight end chart. Yeah, I, I, those little depth charts that they make really are meaningless because you start shooting down my hopes so and awesome. dreams. Wink, stop yeah. shooting them down. Oh, I just I don't mean, think Griffin's gonna make it, man. I don't either. Oh. I, I really see. I mean, he doesn't have the breakaway speed. He doesn't have good tight end speed. But the only thing, the only fucking thing that can keep him on this team is his rapport with Deshaun Watson. 
the only and and, and, you, and you know what? Of all the plays and all the people that I've seen the time watching get the ball to and the whole offseason and they do show real life, I have yet to see his connection with Brian Griffin. And I think that's probably at a later time and you need to jot that down because I think we, we we need to discuss that. Because he's been hitting everybody else. But Ryan Griffin, of all the people that he was hit last year, is not in the mix like that. And I think that I think we really need to expand on that. That's yeah, that, that be that's those rookies, home. man. Them rookies, they I, I think we really we we did probably I wouldn't say hit home runs, but we we got a few doubles, uh, maybe a triple out of these rookies. We'll jump over to we're gonna open up the. Sauce line here shortly because I see a few folks wanting to call in. I see a couple of missed calls. But first, before that, I have to share a hilarious story. Shout out to White Persuasion, man. He said, you know, he's on his way to the city. And the voice from the uh, Super Chat donations is the same voice as the Google Maps. And so he's uh, on his way and he's hearing that voice going, wee woo, wee woo. And it's uh, freaking him out. So I thought that shit was pretty fucking funny. Uh,. I can imagine you trying to listen to some directions and just some old off the wall shit happening. So that shout out to White Persuasion on that one. Um, and we got a red light and green light, and we kept going wee woo, wee woo. <laughs> see, I ain't never played that shit. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm have to ask you some stuff about that a little bit later. I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat interested in see it. But uh, shout out to. To Voodoo Chai, he says, uh, he says, you're high as hell thinking Griffin ain't make the team. The only thing you mean, uh, only thing you mean the biggest thing a receiver and a QB have. Okay. And so as that is the rapport and the connection. Because they had a couple of little good hookups last year. But we're going to open up the sauce line. Man, uh, honestly, Griffin, like I say, I think he's going to stay simply because the way that they position Anderson. Um, I really think that <laughs> – <laughs> I really think that uh, let me make sure I show that love. Uh, I really feel like I like Anderson more, but I mean, you know, again with the with the situation with they have at the bottom of the depth charges going by what the the Texans seem to be putting out there, I think Anderson is going to be the guy that gets cut. You know, Griffin is the guy you want to have some type of veteran presence on that team. So I don't see them getting rid of him and going with a bunch of young guys or less experienced guys with two rookies and and Anderson. Uh, Javoni, I don't think he's going to be in the conversation. Uh, nah. Lingle the Dingle. I don't see him doing too much of shit. Uh, so, like I say, I, I see Griffin sticking around, even though I, I probably prefer him to be cut to me. He's probably the the least athletic of, of all of them. But again, he did have a couple of good hookups with uh, Watson last year. You know that little back shoulder throw he had, and um, so there might be some report they may they may take that into account, and we'll just kind of have to see what happens. But again, you know he's had a couple of concussions too. I think he's had about four in his career. So that may be something that they consider also, you know, Hey, you know, health wise, this guy may or may not last. He could be in a very similar situation to, uh, to Fedora with. So that's definitely something that you have to watch out for. But before we, uh, open up the sauce line, I'm going to make sure I'm going to plug the sauce sports shop again. Just go to stay saucy.com. Check out some of the new merch. We got some, what's the motherfucking deal merch. We got a couple of the, some new items with the new sauce sports logo on there. So make sure y'all check that out, man. And, uh, get you some fresh sauce sports gear. Make sure you rock that shit around the city, you know, and so that the other members of sauce nation can spot you. And, uh, Robbie and Jackie for that fresh ass shit, you know. So don't tell them that uh, Hanso told them to do it because I didn't. But um, sauce line is open, so man, if y'all want to call in and uh, spill your sauce, we'll take a couple of calls before we wrap it up. I just gotta say one thing though uh, about the whole tight end situation. You wouldn't draft two tight ends if you didn't if you didn't think that one of the, one of the guys from your last year roster was gonna stay, or you plan on keeping. Steven Anderson. Mind, turn left. <laughs> <laughs> right, Griffin. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely Griffin, bro. It's I'm definitely laughing. Griffin. I'm laughing because that shit sound just like the fucking Google Maps voice. I'm a quarter mile turn left. If it ain't white persuasion for to be all somewhere else, you know, he gonna be in fucking in, 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 in fucking Lufkin or some shit. You know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna fucking be Hunter. Hunter Excuse me, good sir. Yeah, Could you point yeah, me to yeah. the highway? Y'all be killing me in the motherfucking chat, dog. With just some of the shit that y'all be coming up with, man. In a quarter mile turn left, that shit sounds uh, just like the motherfucking Google bitch. Uh, my I see uh Oh shit. Oh, let me see. Oh, 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 man, 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 good one. Oh. Fuck. 
Yeah, I meant to miss it. I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you shot that, Broderick. And uh, I see you just called in, Dr. Redman. Man. Call back, and I'll make sure I take your call. Uh, we got a call from Simpy Ken. I'm gonna get to your text too, Broderick. Uh, <laughs> I, I ain't gonna be able to call you. I'm just gonna have to call you, Simpy Ken. I ain't mean to call you, Simpy Ken. You did alright. So, Kenny, call him in. We gonna take your take your call. Uh, oh, what's the cold? motherfucking deal, Ken? Man, what kind of sauce you want to spill on the sauce line this evening, man? Nah, man. First and foremost, man, shout out to the round table. Nah, already, already. Yeah, man. But I, it's kind of a two part question. Uh, first of all, I wanted to know how's Winnie Mercedes looking because I know he had like a little minor injury. I just kind of wanted to know if you guys know anything about how he's looking. And um, shit. So. Man, that's about it. I forgot what I was going to say. Fuck it. That's just it. All right, that's a bad I'm going to call in when I get it back. All right. That's a bad man. I appreciate you calling in. And when you're saying that, man, I also brought up another interesting topic. So shout out to Kenneth for calling in, man, holding down the sauce line. Definitely appreciate your call, man. We're going to hang up and we're going to talk about that. All right. Man, he uh he brought up Whitney Merciless. And I think Whitney Merciless kind of been out of commission because of the injury. So they've been taking it easy with him. So I don't think he's been getting too much action. And I think that kind of answers that. But Christian Covington returned to practice yesterday and that's somebody that we have not been talking about much and I feel like will be a vital piece to this Texans defense so do you guys have any thoughts we'll start with uh, Hector and work our way back real quick well, hold on we got another call coming in we'll talk about Covington in just a second Dr. Rabbit what's the motherfucking deal what kind of sauce you want to spill on the sauce line this evening all right what's good round table uh this comes back to the uh to the Cleveland Brown situation now I watched, for those of you who don't know who this guy is, his name is uh, Karsten the Oracle. He makes uh, what if videos. I don't think somebody's going to like him, but he makes what if videos. Uh, he makes a lot of conspiracy theory videos on the NFL, uh, Super Bowl stories, stuff like that. Uh, do you, and in one of the videos that he, he made, he made a video called Meet the Most Interesting Team in the NFL, which is the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I don't really consider them interesting. I just consider them. <laughs> but but aside from that, he mentions in, in he mentions in the video that most of the time when they whenever they lost, it wasn't really Hugh Jackson's fault. It was more of the players just not playing up to their certain ability. Do you think that that's true or is that not true? Okay, okay, very interesting, man. Was that was that Hello? was that a was that a a wet fart or was that a queef? We we need clarification. What was that a queef or was that a wet fart? We we need a we need a definition. We we need to know. Uh. uh you may- <laughs> okay, can, can can you repeat that again, please? The, the, the noise that you made was that a queef or was that a wet fart? Uh, I mean, it was. I mean, I mean, it was a fart noise from my mouth. I don't know how to. But I mean, what? 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 I mean, is it a pussy fart? Uh, what? What fart category does that noise belong in? So was that a, was a pussy <laughs> fart? Or was it just a, 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 your your average wet fart? <laughs> uh, that's about Tenny Man. Was it supposed to be a dry fart? Did it sound like a dry fart? I, mean, I don't know. I mean, we, we just, we're just trying to clarify, man. We just want to make sure that if we're if we're saying that, hey, the Cleveland Browns are a pussy fart, you know, they're a bunch of queefs, and that's one thing. But if you're talking about they're just a wet fart, now you're talking about something completely different. These are two completely different categories. Similar sounding noises, but completely different categories. So, I mean, you got to be cautious, man. You can't just you can't just be going out there calling people queefs, you know, and they just really some wet fart. I mean, this is a big Yeah, thing. no, no. No saliva was involved while making those farts. Okay, okay. Well, here's the deal, man. I appreciate you uh, calling in, uh, Dr. Rabbit. We'll definitely answer your thoughts on that. And uh, text that name in the chat because I'm not sure, but it's something to Oracle, and uh, I'll check it out. I'll check out some of those videos. But I appreciate you calling in. We'll speak on that. All right. <laughs> uh, the Browns, the Cleveland Browns. Uh, was it – more Hugh Jackson or was it more the players failing to play up to their potential? It's a combination of both, man. It's a combination. It's, it, it, it's, it's, oh, okay. 
Yeah, uh, I think it's honestly it's a combination of both, bro, because they didn't put the roster together enough to where they could really perform on offense or defense to close off games. But it, it is crazy that they kept games close all season last year. With the exception of us, not too many teams blew out the, the Cleveland Browns. But um, hopefully they get that shit right because I honestly I want them to be good, man. I'm tired of I'm tired of teams like them being the laughing stock. I want them to be good so that they can be competitive and they can be in the conversation of being a decent team in the AFC North. Honestly. What's the motherfucking deal, man? Who we got calling in the sauce line? Hello, hello. Who we got calling in on the sauce line? Anybody there? I guess we're not catching. I don't know if it's on my end or what. Let me see. But, uh, but yeah, actually, I'm just really looking at the time. We're going to actually uh, wrap it up here shortly. But I want to get to a text. I want to finish those points that you made, and I want to get to a text. That was given. I'm damn. I didn't really pay attention to how long we've been here. Um, but you go ahead and finish making that point that you were making, uh, Wink, and then we'll we'll jump to something here in just a second. I'll let everybody. Oh no no no, 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 I was done. Okay, no, no, and, I was uh, done. Braylon and Hector, you guys have any thoughts on the the Cleveland Brown situation? Is it uh, Hugh Jackson or is it uh, the lack of talent performing? Um, it was a few games where it was the talent. First off, I'm going to talk about the biggest shit that happened last year, and that was their receiver dropping a wide open pass that should have been caught easily. I mean, it just went straight through his hands. It was... No. That's why they <laughs> traded his hands out of that hole. Just dropped, and it was it was over. I don't know how the hell you dropped something that bad. It, 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 it's like a quarter... But it's, as a matter of fact, it was as bad as Tom Brady dropping the ball. But, um... That's a bit. Yeah, I think it was talent. That's I think it, I, I think it was talent. So, I'm yeah. out, Honcho. Peace. It's an attitude thing, man. I mean, you know, you got you got to give it to Hugh Jackson because I mean, in the end of it all, the coach has got to be able to get the the locker room going. But I think there's an there was an attitude with the the Cleveland Browns that like you know, oh, we're you know we're in the the worst team in the NFL, you know, like. There's an there's an attitude. I mean, yeah, you don't want to be the laughing stock of the NFL, but you know, everybody knows what the Cleveland Browns is. I mean, they've been horrible for years and no one wants to be there. And I think you get that from the players. You you have the guys that are trying to make it make the best out of their situations, but then you also have guys that just they just don't want to be there. But the thing is, if you want to go somewhere else, you got to at least put out and, and play, but I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an attitude thing, and I think, I guess, the reason why they're considered this team interesting is because of all the new players that they brought in, Tyrod Taylor, uh, you know, Jarvis Lynch, because they're, they, you know, some of these guys have those attitudes that, you know, they don't care where they're going, they're gonna play, um, and you know, maybe Hugh Jackson could finally get it, get it together, but if not. You know who knows, but I think the the Browns are definitely looking like they're going towards a different direction uh, as far as attitude. Shit, I, I but but Hunter, I will say, um, hey Hector was getting ready to making a point about the tight ends before we had actually got into the call. There was something he was gonna say about the tight ends. Uh, you remember that point, Hector? If you wanted to to touch on that. Uh, the tight end. I was the only reason. The only thing I was saying was because I'm, 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 I'm one of those guys that actually feels that Griffin will be gone and possibly Anderson. I think both of them will be gone. And the only reason why I say that is just because you just don't draft two tight ends. Like you know, corner is one thing. You know, linebackers that's another thing. But you just don't draft two tight ends, in my opinion. I definitely agree with you because you obviously are seeking some type of change there if you are, you know, focusing heavily on that position, especially when you didn't have a lot of, you know, we had a, a decent number of picks, but not a lot of uh, picks overall, I would say, you know, missing that first and second round. So you definitely is something you had to concentrate on with those number of picks. Um, I want to get to this text real quick because Brian got sent yesterday and I meant to get to it. And I thought it was a very good point. And uh, <clears throat> I know, Devontae, I missed your call, man. And uh, if you want to 
call back or send a text. Okay, cool. I think you uh, you texted right there, so I'm gonna catch that, and then uh, we're gonna wrap it up shortly. Yeah, just say this text, and we'll we'll answer that tomorrow. Yeah, but I'm gonna get to this. I'm gonna get to this Broderick one real quick. Uh, <clears throat> say one thing we have to keep in mind about Aiken is he wasn't playing on the same field with Hop, Foreman, Fuller, Kuti, etc. There's only so many exotic coverages, and you can't cover everyone. Pick your poison. Aiken will be okay. I think that's a I think that's a legitimate thing to consider. And once you do have all these other guys, if if Aiken can show up the way that he did in that preseason game, you know, and I think that he would be the most slept on out of all those other talents. Because I mean, those are all guys that can that can damage you. You talking about Hopkins? We already know what Hopkins is. We know what Fuller's capable of with, with Watson, uh, Kuti. We've heard a lot of good shit about him. I think if it came down to it. Uh, Aiken probably would be the least respected pass catcher out of that bunch, and so he may be able to do or may be able to find his way and uh, be able to put up some solid numbers in a situation like that. Uh, let me get the roundtable thoughts on that. We'll start with uh, Wink and work our way to Hector, and then uh, we'll take Devontae's question after that, and then we'll be a wrap. Okay, but when we say slept on, we'll be slept on for how long? I don't think I, – I think a play, I think those type of players end up getting, you know, getting found out sooner than later. You know, it's 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 a few guys that have been slept on over the past few years who came to broke out and become elite talents in this and you know in the NFL. One one name that comes to mind is a guy like Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen came to fuck. Matter of fact, his coming out party was against us two years ago, week five, against J. Joe. He made J. Joe look real bad in that week five game when we got destroyed against um, the Vikings. You know, so he's an anomaly. But it's not too many of those guys, and honestly, he could, he could end, up, he could end up doing all these things that y'all think that he's going to be able to do, you know. And if and if he does, that's better for the football team. So we need as many weapons as we can. Uh, we need, you know, production from everywhere that we can get it. Any other thoughts on uh, seeing Akers with that group of receivers and what he'll be able to do in that mix? Yeah, nothing. Hector, nothing. Um, I mean, you, you know, you kind of go back to the whole, whole depth and versatility thing for the Texans, and you, you want a guy that you can you find reliable, and I think Akins is trying to prove that that's what he is. I mean, other than that, that's pretty much it. Okay. And here's the last uh, question we're going to take, and that's from Devontae. And uh say, what's up? <clears throat> say, Hunter, my question is about the Pats week one. Do you think that Deshaun Watson will put up at least 30 points, and will it be necessary to win that game? Uh, I want to say yes and yes to both of those. But I don't think – I feel like the Pats only put up 20 in some shape. That defense is what we're, we're seeing right now. Again, with the ability of Clowney, they're saying he should be ready for week one. If Merciless is, is all well and good, we know what he's able to do uh, against guys like uh, Tom Brady. If they get to him early and often, it's going to be a wrap for Tom Brady because he's going to get frustrated. He's going to be over there crying to the refs uh, and not focused on the game. So I think if Deshaun Watson just stays, you know, with his usual demeanor, which I don't expect uh, there to be any reason why not, uh, I see us putting up nice numbers. I see us putting up similar numbers to last year, but playing better defensively. Uh, your thoughts on and, and uh, week one? Not even. Oh, well, I say yes to both both questions that you just said, and we're not even talking about dudes like Duke Covington. Mm -hmm. Covington was able to make plays and get a sack against Tom Brady. DJ Reader is able to push the pocket against Tom Brady, and they lost offensive line talent. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. That's the biggest glaring weakness on their offense that we could probably take advantage of due to all this the pass this successful pass rush that we have on top of the, the developing pass rush. And we're not even talking about if you're sitting in a corner or somebody like Justin Reed. See a player like Justin Reed could very well come out making making his bread butter off rip while um Kareem is up top for what we're saying, playing in that box and if he's able to blitz off of the edge you know, on a delayed blitz, and you still got Bernard McKinney, Dylan Cole, and we ain't even mentioned Zach Cunningham yet. So, I mean, we should be able to handle business, and if we win that game, and we win that game with Tom Brady healthy throughout the game, and he gave us his all, and he did everything he could to win it, it's only going to make the shit sweeter, and it's going to give our team and Bill O'Brien the utmost confidence, because nobody needs more confidence on this football team than Bill O'Brien as a head coach. 
And I think him finally being able to beat Belichick would definitely uh, make him feel good about himself, at least for a week. Uh, None maybe. of his constituents can say that they have ever beat him. Mm-hmm. It's not one coach that I can remember right off the top of my head that's beat Bill Belichick in the game. Your uh, thoughts, B and B, Hector. Y'all got any thoughts on the situation? Will Brady have to? Will we have? Will Deshaun Watson put up thirty? And will we need that to beat the Patriots Week One up in Foxborough? Um, I don't think we would need to beat need thirty, but Deshaun Watson can easily put up thirty on, on that defense. I mean, I, I don't see anybody in that defense who can single handedly eliminate Hopkins or who single eliminate um, Lamar Miller or single eliminate. Well, Fuller, because it's just their their defense is getting to that point where they're starting to look old. Maybe maybe a couple pieces are young, but the, the secondary looks so. You have Devin McCourty old, Jason McCourty old, uh, Patrick Chung is Chung is still is is getting there. Uh, I mean, Stephon Gilmore made a couple of nice plays, but I think he's he's underplayed his contract so far. Um, so. When it comes to Brady possibly doing something, Brady makes all of his receivers look like they're the best receivers in the NFL. I don't know how. Chris Togan is the most overrated receiver I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen somebody so more overrated in my life. God just runs a, a, a post and a slant and a streak and is the best receiver of all time. Because, see, I've never seen him just out-route somebody. It's just always they've been outsmarted. On the, uh, the defense has been all smarted. I, I don't see anybody weapons wise on the Patriots that can beat us. Edelman's out for the first four games due to suspension. Um, I, I mean, you never know. It's, it's it's always people. You never know. Rob. I mean, Gronk could get hurt in in a uh, practice in the next couple of days. He might have a back injury or something like that. You, you would never know. But um, I just don't see anybody reliable other than Tom Brady that can beat us. But it's Tom Brady, so it's nothing. It's just it's nothing new. It's Tom Brady pieces. But I feel like we win easily in Foxborough because Deshaun Watson would make Tom Brady look like an average quarterback, and Deshaun Watson would look like the best quarterback in the league in that game. All right, you got any thoughts on that, Hector? Um, I don't know about thirty points. If I don't think we need thirty points to win the game. But um, I do think that Deshaun could easily throw 30 points in that game. Uh, as far as this win, this is a, it's a statement win if we get this. Uh, um, you know, everybody's, everybody has so many questions about the Texans. Like, you know, is Deshaun fully recovered? You know, all that BS. And I'm, t- I'm sure the Texans players are just as annoyed as we are hearing it. You know, we know what we have in, in this team when they're fully healthy. And, you know, it's this is going to be that game where we the Texans have to make that statement that, you know, some teams don't even have us winning our division. And, and that's and that just baffles me. You know, even if you think that the AFC South has gotten a lot better, I, I think a healthy Texans roster is definitely better than than the, the rest of our division. I think we have the same odds as uh, the Jaguars as far as winning the Super Bowl. I think it was a 9-1. to one. And so <clears throat> I think that the odds makers, the money men, the people who don't like losing their money, the people who like taking people's money because some people believe in hype and bullshit, uh, they know what's yeah. really good. If this Texans team is healthy uh, and if they believe in J.J. and Watson and all these things coming to fruition, they know that we, we are the best team in this division when healthy. I mean, because we're just overall. I've seen a, hmm? Go ahead. I, I think I've seen a uh... – some odds makers. I think I've seen the thing you see, and I think they did the AFC teams. And I want to say we were like the third or fourth team mm-hmm. in the AFC that they had winning the Super Bowl. I forgot what the exact odds were, but I think I seen that earlier today. Yeah, it was like it was like Patriots, like uh, three to one. I forgot who was second uh-huh. with like eleven to two, and then it was us. And Steelers. Steelers with eleven to two, and then it was us and Jacksonville, like nine to one. So, 
Very interesting. Like I say, so that definitely tells what people think about Jacksonville. You know, maybe they overplayed or they just feel like we'll get back to where we're supposed to be. But here's the deal, man. We're going to wrap it up. I appreciate everybody who stuck through and committed through the whole Sauce Man show. Love all the way through. Shout out to Matthew Robinson. Apologize to anybody whose calls I missed. And uh, we'll make sure to get the sauce line open a little bit earlier next time. Make sure y'all check out that staysaucy.com. Check out some of their new merch, man. Get flying some of that sauce gear for the season. Um, I want to shout out to the round table, man. I want to shout out to Wink. Shout out to Tenny. I know you had to. Take care of a little bit of business. Shout out to Hector. Shout out to Breaking News Braylon. Again, if you want to check out their channels, links in the description below. You can check out my feature channels. It's right there. So, I mean, in the whole Sauce Roundtable. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to Scroogeson. Shout out to Phoenix. Shout out to uh, Spitz. Shout out to Ray Ray. You know what I'm saying? It was good to see him another day. Man, shout out to Darren Davis. Shout out to anybody I may have forgotten, man. Like I say, it's nothing but love. And, uh, again, all the links on the description, all the side. So, you can, uh, you can definitely check that out. Um, anything you guys want to say before we get up out of here? Man, um, just once again, we did it again. Uh, we appreciate everybody that came through. Make sure you subscribe to all the channels. Uh, hit that like button for Honcho. Hit that like button now if you haven't hit that like button. You know, it's no reason, you know, for us to have as many views as we have and the likes are down. You know what I'm saying? So just do us a favor and hit that like button. Share these videos on any of your social medias. Let a friend or two know, you know what I'm saying, so we can bring some more people in the sauce. Uh, really, I uh, really appreciate that. Um, B and B, Hector, you you got any uh, thing y'all want to say before we get out of here? Uh, now just shout out to everybody that tunes in, tunes in every time we on, and we have a lot of loyal fans. Um, fans more loyal than us, and they are the six ten to seven ninety. Um, just thank y'all for showing us love, so. Uh, unconditional love y'all come in every night and um so it's especially with the donations tonight the likes even if you just like just do, like the button press the like button press the like button just gives us feedback and you know show us show us what we can improve on you know because we're approaching some heavy competition because you know guys are starting to copy us and just say Hey, look, hey, often imitated, never duplicated. We ain't mad. We are, we appreciate it. You know, they say imitation is the highest form of flattery. You know what I'm saying? So we ain't really worried about that bullshit. Again, you, 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 can, you, can, you can copy the recipe, but if you ain't got the right ingredients, man, hey, it don't matter. It ain't the same sauce. Uh, but definitely, definitely appreciate that. Hector, you got anything you want to say before we slide out here, man? Oh, uh, shout out to everybody, man. You know, time is valuable. And for you guys to put in time and, you know, get on the sauce and interact with us, it just it just feels great. Uh, you know, hopefully, you know, you guys been watching my videos and hopefully I'm getting y'all into soccer, <laughs> yeah. but if not, that's still cool. Um, but yeah, shout out to, shout out to the city of Houston, man. Everything's been going great. I think, uh, you know, the Texans and the Astros and, and the Rockets, shout out to the Rockets, even though I'm not a fan, uh, <laughs> but I work there, <laughs> but you know, three, you know, three big, you know, three Houston teams made three huge uh three big signings you know you had the the astros getting gary cole you had the texans getting uh the honey badger and now you got mellow coming to the Rockets. so that's pretty big and guys wanting to come here you know so that just shows how much the city of houston really is up and up so and i mean dynamo are going to the u.s open cup final so congrats to them but you know just you know thanks for supporting everything and if y'all want more sauce, man, the podcast is back. I'll be trying to drop those. Try to get them before noon, so either noon or early afternoon by the time they post back on the gram stuff. But I'm going to start bringing those back again. Uh, I gave everybody from the round table a shout out, and I'm going to have to get a Hector on there to talk baseball because I, I, I winged it today the best I could. You know what I'm saying? I, I even gave the Dynamo a shout out. So, you know, I made sure that uh, they got their love too. But with that being said, man, hey. We're going to chunk up a deuce. Links in the description below for everything you need to know. Sauce related, sauce affiliated, sauce situated, man. We're going to chunk up a deuce. Y'all be cool like y'all be cool. 